avec euh, bon, des gens de sa famille, euh, des amis, euh, sa communauté, je n'ai pas, pas vraiment hésité. Malgré euh, cet euh, élan de justice qu'on peut avoir, je me suis je ai quand même venue à, à, à la tête euh, le fait que, bien qu'on dise qu'on n'a pas le droit, c'est quoi en fait les risques qu'on peut prendre quand on se rassemble 100, 115 personnes, j'ai entendu, euh, on se rassemble, on se mobilise, puis on, agir, euh, on agit en solidarité. Et puis la, la réflexion qui m'est venue, mais c'est quoi les risques qu'une personne peut avoir quand elle quitte son pays, quand elle quitte sa ville pour aller voir un parent éloigné? Bien, pour M. Abdel Razik, ça a été le moment d'un long cauchemar, un cauchemar qui implique directement et principalement le gouvernement du Canada. La situation que vit M. Abdel Razik s'inscrit dans une série de cas où le gouvernement du Canada retire à des personnes le droit fondamental à la justice. Et puis, en agissant comme ça, le gouvernement, puis bon, en particulier des fonctionnaires également du Service canadien de renseignement et de sécurité, euh, ont agi. Euh, on peut se demander, par, tout, par toutes ces lois, tous ces processus euh, euh, extrajudiciaires, torture, harcèlement, emprisonnement, ben, on peut également avoir honte. Et puis, le Canada, par ces lois-là, se rend responsable et complice du système euh, d'apartheid global qui gère la vie de tous et chacun. Euh, où certaines, euh, certaines personnes se promènent avec un paquet de privilèges invisibles, passeport, citoyenneté, carte visa, carte bancaire, alors que d'autres en subissent plutôt les conséquences, euh, non accès, bon, besoins fondamentaux, besoins alimentaires, bien-être, santé, sécurité physique et judiciaire, puis ici, ben, l'interdiction de vol. Euh, interdiction de prendre un avion et de revenir, euh, qui interdit finalement un individu, euh, un père, de revenir vivre chez lui dans sa ville et sa communauté. Alors, ben, la réponse qu'on pourrait faire à les questions que vous avez mentionnées, à savoir pourquoi est-ce qu'on choisit de faire cette action-là, ben, c'est justement quand le gouvernement se rend euh, responsable de telles injustices, coupable de telles injustices, ben, c'est à nous, euh, les gens de la société civile, de lui rappeler son rôle, puis en fait, c'est un rôle qu'on lui donne, en fait. Alors, quand j'ai vu cet appel-là à la solidarité, je n'ai pas vraiment hésité, puis je n'ai pas hésité parce que c'est cette solidarité-là celle de la justice, celle de la dignité, qui va faire qu'on va gagner, en fait. Alors, pour le retour de Abou Sufyan Abdelrazik à Montréal avec ce billet dans trois semaines. And for myself, um, I have never met M. Abdelrazik. Uh, I can say that um, finding out information about his case and knowing friends of his and seeing how the Canadian government has responded, um, I think everyone should be concerned, and I agree with Emily that uh, we have a, responsible, a responsibility as civil society to remind the government of their responsibility to look after the people minimum. We have a responsibility throughout the world, but we also have a responsibility to look after people uh, that we live with that are part of our communities, and Abdel Razik is one of them. And as far as I know, he hasn't been charged with anything, so I don't understand why he's being refrained from coming home. And I think until he is proven, until there is any kind of evidence, he stands as I do uh, without a, a record. I don't have a criminal record. I hope I don't get one. I should be able to stand beside him uh, until and support him and uh, him having his ticket to get home. Anytime I see uh, a case like this where I see the rights of someone being denied, I'm thinking that the, it's also an affront to my own rights. And I think that if I don't stand up and say something about it, I'm also uh, risking my own rights, and so I think it's something that uh, everyone should be paying attention to. And unfortunately, there's all kinds of people who are being, uh, who are suffering injustices in Canada, and uh, these are cases that get media attention. And, and I heard about him through the media, I heard about him through friends, and, and really great organizing in Montreal and around Canada. And there are many cases that don't have that same kind of support, and it's our responsibility to find out about it. And in this case, for me, I felt the responsibility to be part of this and to have this man come home to Canada to see his children. I could not imagine what it'd be like to, for my parents to be stuck and, you know, going from detention, have no idea what they're being charged with. Uh, so I think it's unacceptable and I think it makes complete sense that all of us, and there are more people, there are some people who are anonymous too who 
you know, don't benefit from the same privileges I have of being a citizen who still are contributing because we have a, a citizenship tier of uh, different rights in Canada. So I think I, as someone who's been born here, uh, who grew up here, who has full-fledged rights for a bunch of reasons that have nothing to do with my life, but just who I happen to be, um, I think it's important that I take those privileges and, and support someone who's suffering from our own government's injustices. How, how prepared are you to go to jail for this? Uh, no, I'm not prepared. I have a job. I have commitments. I have family. Uh, I walk my dog before coming here. I plan, I hope to be able to walk my dog and take care of uh, uh, my family and also I have huge responsibilities. I ha actually have to leave soon because I have to start work in half an hour. So I expect my life to go on as usual, but I, I also think that um, no one's prepared to go to jail, but I think I'm also not prepared to see my rights slowly slip away from me, and I think that it's a testament uh, what's happening here that what could also be something that happens to me. And how seriously are you taking the potential charges? Against I'm taking it seriously. Like, I'm definitely afraid. Um, but I also think that how I see these policies changing in Canada and the way the immigration system is going, I think that's uh, even scarier. And I think if we don't stand up and do something now, that we risk far more worse scenarios in the future. So I think, uh, I, and I'm not standing alone, and that's the thing. I, I, I admit I'm a coward. I would never, I, I don't know if I would do this alone, but the fact that I'm doing this with all kinds of people, uh, it's, it's something that makes me feel a lot stronger and confident uh, that, you know, I won't be alone, and that if I'm going to jail, there's 115 of us, uh, and so we're going to have a lot of people supporting us and organizing around us. De rêve, mais moi, ça a été tout à fait le contraire. Moi, j'ai grandi euh, sous un, un régime de dictature. Donc, je suis très forte de la prison. C'est ils veulent enfermer le monde et surtout la communauté. Moi, j'ai appris le, euh, le cas de Abu Sofiane, évidemment, parce que je suis une membre de la communauté musulmane, que, que j'ai peur, je ne veux pas sacrifier mon confort, mais il n'y a pas raison de le sacrifier. Il faut me donner une bonne raison. Et, et c'est aussi pour moi-même, c'est le respect d'une personne, c'est le rêve d'une vie que vous voulez vivre libre. Et puis, si je vois une autre personne mise en prison, mais c'est un peu moi qui est en prison, et c'est ça que je défends avec 20 dollars. My motivation is different because I grew up in a country where there was dictatorship. And I came in Canada, to Canada to live in a free country. And when I see that the government is intimidating us and saying that we will be penalized if we help Abu Sufyan to return home, I just say no. I'm going to stand up. I'm not going to sacrifice my dream of living in a country where rights will prevail. It's a question about human dignity. It's more a question about how I see myself, how I see my life, how I see my struggle, than only Abu Sufyan. It's the question of a whole community that is suffering. And now we say enough is enough. We're not going to accept injustice. <laughs> So this is just, this is just to be done. Are you good? Yeah.